I feel like Ryan Murphy fans already know that this is going to be problematic because Ryan Murphy series have been having a lot of problems lately. But I gotta tell you, these are some real, some real doozies, some real whoppers. So let's get to it. Uh, so yes, Ratchet is riddled with problems. People have had a lot of fun coming up with headlines for how bad this is. I saw Ratchet, Ratchet is wretched. Uh, and I, I don't know. I mean, there's some good stuff here, which we're going to discuss, but I, I'm not quite sure what everybody was thinking. This feels like early stages of a show in development, not what we actually got. But the most absurd problem with Ratchet, like you would think someone would say, just I have to say, someone would be like, I, I think there's something here, but there's too much. Like someone should have like, where's the editor here? Not even just the editor. I'm not talking about a film editor. I'm talking about a script editor. You know, even an outline editor being like, just with just with a red pen, just taking out huge swaths of this to boil it down to something that could have been, I think, quite good. And there is hope for season two, which has already been greenlit. All right, so anyway, the most absurd problem with this show, which we could all kind of tell from the trailers, is that there's no way that this Nurse Ratched turns into the one from the 1975 film. Louise Fletcher won the Oscar for her performance, and when Ratched was first announced, Vanity Fair did a splashy interview with, interview with Fletcher, where she revealed not only some of her some thoughts about Nurse Ratched, the role, the character she developed behind the scenes, you know, because we don't know everything, but an actor needs to know more. Uh, she didn't she didn't divulge most of it, but she said, "I would have told Ryan Murphy." If he'd asked me, yes, she revealed that Ryan Murphy and Sarah Paulson never approached her to discuss the iconic character that she brought to life. I, the only reason anyone cares about Nurse Ratched is because of Louise Fletcher, but Murphy and Paulson weren't interested. Now, sure, in their defense, artists can have different takes, but I'd be awfully curious to see how Murphy and Sarah Paulson could justify a high fashion criminal who constantly breaks the rules evolving into a woman with, who has no vanity in her appearance and lives for the rules. Paulson's Ratched would have teamed up with McMurphy, not become his adversary. In fact, Paulson's Ratched herself descends on a mental institution and is just as disruptive as McMurphy, although she's not well-intentioned and she's actually grossly incompetent uh, because she's supposed to know what she's doing. Uh, and on that point, uh, it, it, on that note, at one point, Judy Davis's nurse Bucket sneers, and no one can sneer like Judy Davis, by the way. But she, and, and so, so, so she sneers that they don't need doctors to run the asylum. Yet these nurses make mistake after mistake after mistake, all the while being incredibly unprofessional. At the devastating expense, isn't this always the way, of someone else? either a patient or a coworker. They need doctors there. I think that the show makes it pretty clear. And I don't even think the show's trying to make it clear. It's like the show, the show seems to agree with Nurse Bucket, even though it's clearly not the case. Now, of course, there is one doctor involved in the show, and that's uh, John John Brion's Dr. Richard Hanover, uh, who plays Dr. Richard Hanover, who is indeed incompetent himself. And there's, there's an old saying, which everyone's heard, and that's the inmates are running the asylum. But unfortunately, Murphy and Paulson's ratchet, Paulson is an executive or even just a producer on this, so she has a lot of ownership here. But the show isn't clever enough to, any, to actually do anything with that saying. Instead, Murphy and Paulson have effectively made American Horror Story Hitchcock, which is not a bad idea. I don't know why they had, if they just took the ratchet stuff out, if they just made an American Horror Story Hitchcock, I think it could have been really cool. And there are still cool moments here because of that. Uh, the bold, elegant visuals make Ratched watchable. They even have a motel. And I gotta tell you, it's the location set, the location gift that keeps on giving. It's just so sumptuous. So many amazing shots in the exterior. I think some of it's an actual location. Some of it seems to be a set. Some of it might even be a model, but it really works. It's gorgeous. Uh, but also like Murphy's Hollywood, which of course came out earlier this year, once again, he forces modern sensibilities on a period piece, yet wants to have his cake and eat it too. He creates a world where Sophie uh, Okonedo's multiple personality disorder patient was targeted because of her race and a brutal attack, yet at the same, same time, Michael Benjamin Washington's barely closeted lawyer is a partner in an LA law firm in the 1940s. Now, it's important, I, I agree with many of you, to tell stories where the, where the LGBT community and people of color are not persecuted. Not everything needs to be 
uh, a really sad story, right? That's how, that's, uh, that's a shift people have said they want to see in the way, in the stories that Hollywood tells. But I think it's really important in period pieces. So I think like you want those powerful stories and modern day stories and futuristic stories. But when you're doing period pieces, you shouldn't pave over the persecution that these groups did suffer, which has forged them into the fighters for justice that they are today. And again, I had this problem with Hollywood, those Hollywood series as well. I think a story, by the way, about LGBT people and people of color in the 1940s who were often cruelly labeled as mentally ill, even though that was obviously not the case, could be really incredible, but that's not what's done here. Uh, for instance, two LGBT women undergo lobotomies but, uh, by the inexperienced Dr. Hanover. He's like, let me see what I, let's, let's try these lobotomies out. And they're just fine after the procedure. In fact, they're exactly the same. Someone cannot jam an ice pick into your brain and you're the same as you were before. It's just, it, you know, I wouldn't make light of lobotomies. You're like, why did McMurphy have such a bad reaction? One flew over the cuckoo's nest. These people are fine. All right, so once again, Murphy puts too much on his plate. Uh, for instance, one minute, Finn Whitrock is Norman Bates. Then he becomes Hannibal Lecter. Then he's Clyde Barrow. Then he's Lenny from Mice and Men. You're like, pick a lane. And the same goes for Ratchet, who starts out a cold-blooded murderer, but by the end, we're supposed to root for her as an LGBT women's right advocate mixed with Clarice Starling? What? I will say, though, that the ending of Ratchet, which is greenlit, greenlit for a second season, as I said, is the most interesting part of the show. But that's because it becomes a totally different show. So maybe season two will be better. I would be curious to see what happens after the ending. Back to season one, uh, Murphy also includes abuse after assault after abuse after assault. We're talking rape by priest, child prostitution, and very graphic detail in some cases. Or at least, you know, you know, it's not like a cutie situation, but uh, it, it, there's graphic, I guess, description. Like, there, it's not alluded to. And while it's true that these things can lead to mental illness as victims are left to pick up the pieces and try to carry on with their lives, here Murphy and Paulson seem to only be including them for perverse entertainment rather than any actual meaningful exploration and how they might link to mental illness. Like there's, you can see something that could have taken shape here, but it doesn't. It doesn't take shape, which it makes it wildly irresponsible in some ways. But despite all this, Ratchet still has its moments because as I said, it's American Horror Story Hitchcock. It's got gorgeous production values and costumes, a Bernard Herrmann-esque score that's so beautifully haunting. And the cast is very appealing. Paulson, Whitrock, Charlie Carver, and Judy Davis do excellent work, uh, while Sharon Stone is a nice uh, substitute for Jessica Lange, although with sharper edges. Uh, Amanda Plummer, uh, uh, Sharon Stone's role is small, but I have to say, I thought she did actually a pretty nice job. She's well cast. Amanda Plummer, though, is, at first I was like, oh, wow, it's Amanda Plummer. And then I was like, her character is annoying. So it might just be the way the character was written, but I did not enjoy Amanda Plummer here. And while I love seeing an Asian actor in a lead role, John John Brion's is so unbelievable as a doctor who ever knew what he was doing, he makes for a poor foil against Ratchet, who easily runs rings around him. I think it would have been much more interesting if she had been more evenly matched uh, by a different actor and the way the role was written. As for Sophie Okonedo, while her role is cartoonishly and insensitively written, I've seen a couple of people do articles about this. It's pretty bad. But Okanito does her best and is so personable and gives her character a real mystique and is part of a pretty cool twist at the end that I have to say I'm very curious to see what happens with her character as well. I actually felt that despite the insensitivity of her role, she actually was one of the most interesting players in the game because of what Okanito, her performance, what she did. Finally, it is nice to see a strong LGBT soap opera romance in a genre piece. So at least Ratchet accomplished that, even though there's all these other problems to distract you from what, again, is, I think, a nice and significant accomplishment. So that's my review of Ratchet, which starts streaming this Friday, September 18th on Netflix. Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.